Well, hello, good morning. You're welcome to uh, the sports segment here on New Day. My name is Yao Ofusu Labi, and uh, we, are, we are continuing uh, our coverage of the GFA elections and having uh, the presidential candidates in the studio uh, to discuss their plans for reforming the new football association. This morning, I have one of the seven candidates in the studio with me. Amanda Clinton uh, was a former counsel for the football association and now wants the position, the highest position in football in Ghana. Amanda, you're welcome to the studio this morning. Thanks for having me on the show. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, it's, it's um, how has it been, you know, the past few weeks? They've been tough, haven't they? Not at all. I mean, I'm used to being in high-pressured environments. Right. Um, and I'm used to leading in campaigns, including the campaign to ensure that the GFA was not wound up. Yeah. Um, men's gold customers campaign uh, you know to redirect the narrative and you know traveling on abroad um, on behalf of the government of Ghana when I used to work with the Attorney General's department so right. this is pretty light. This is pretty light. <laughs> <laughs> All right now I mean you, you were working last year for the Football Association. Yeah. I mean they, they, <clears throat> they, they, they had you working there for some time and was that the point where you decided to do this to, oh, to, to come up front and say, and say I want to be president of the Football Association? Not at all, right. not at all. Um, I had a very distinct role in terms of being retained uh, specifically for the FIFA arm um, of their campaign, which was to ensure that FIFA knew that it sh you know, the organisation that every single football club belongs to in Ghana should not be wound up right. and, you know, it should stay as an, a legal entity. Um, and then my role changed slightly when all um, um, EXCO, the executive committee, were injuncted from holding themselves out as uh, belonging to the EXCO. And so all of a sudden, you know, I had to try and redirect the narrative that was happening in the public, you know, with FIFA and engage um, with government, etc. Yeah. So, um, I mean... So, no, I wasn't yeah. thinking of it then. I thought of it when um, a lot of people were talking to me about the female ex-school role. They okay. were like, oh, you know, you'd be ideal, you'd be ideal. And I was like, well, you know, given my background and my skill set, perhaps the president role might be more suitable. So, it, it literally was just a few weeks ago. Right. Now, um, let's just go through the, the campaign process. How's it been? I'm speaking to delegates, are you certain that you're going to win? Um, I'm definitely engaging as many delegates as possible. There's 120 delegates who are going to decide by the end of this month who will be the next president of the GFA. Um, meeting them at, in, in terms of their needs, uh, listening to them and persuading them that I'm a new voice and a new face. Um, because another thing people are fixated on is that, you know, the word president is like, oh, you know, some big man sitting at the top of, of, of the chain sort of thing. But as you, you know, you, you've gone through my manifesto, for me, it's very much about servant leadership, right. where the, my style of leadership would be to serve the organization, okay. um, be it meeting um, delegates' needs, uh, club owners' needs, stakeholder needs, right. as well as um, marketing the brand to corporate Ghana. So very much actively working right. in that capacity, as opposed to just wanting to be this symbolic head um, and maybe not as effective. Right. Now, I mean, uh, going to your manifesto, the first page says um, it is divided into three um, you know, the different parts. That's more investment, more impact, yes. and more oversight. Yeah. Just, just take us through that. Um, those key things, more investment, more impact, and more um, oversight, is something that's key to develop any organization, but particularly in this case. Um, the other thing is it's also... Um, a FIFA, these are, these are FIFA's three main things for development. Right. And my style of leadership, should I be elected as next president of the GFA, would be to ensure that we localize something that works very well on a higher level in terms of FIFA has billions of dollars pumped in and they filter it down. Right. So we want to, if I was elected, you know, localize that model in terms of not everything that is FIFA level um, can work in Ghana because of, you know, the dynamics of the actors and the players and, and, and different things. Right. But more investment um, comes through strategic management, organizational planning, as well as um, engagement with corporate Ghana. More impact comes with more money. You can impact more and let more people know 
you know, about the game right. and more oversight. Mm -hmm. So whereby, for instance, if there's a new fund for women okay. or, 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 or girls and um, it's like a three million dollar fund, right. um, automatically that goes on the website and every time it's distributed, you know, an update is on the website so you know exactly how that money was spent, which is not what we saw for Pram Pram and different things. You right. know, a lot of money got, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so one of the main um, uh, things that you're going to work with is transparency from what you're saying. Very moment. much so. I mean, yeah. I, I'm a lawyer by training. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just within our DNA um, to... Really? Yes, it is. All, <laughs> most lawyers in practice are very honourable. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, an underlying theme of uh, all the candidates, I've, I've listened to every one of them, and the major thing is that they want to rebrand the Football Association. And that means the Football Association has a bad image. Yeah. Um, that's what it means. Now, mm -hmm. And I'm sure you face this subtly within your time when you work there. You know, if you're elected, how do you intend to change this? Um, by just going back to the fact that any time that there's negativity surrounding something, it also means there's a massive spotlight on the issue. Right. And with that spotlight, you can turn it around for good. Um, so a lot of attention, I mean, more attention than GFA has ever had is now. So it is about strategically um, rebranding by, for instance, if I were elected by the next, you know, the 120 delegates yeah. um, did elect me on the basis of, you know, oversight, corporate sponsorship and the different things I can bring, that would be a sure sign to all stakeholders, right. including government. Um, including FIFA, including um, corporate Ghana and the public. Because ironically, I think the biggest people who support me right now are the, is the public, right. as opposed to um, some delegates. Okay. But if you are out there with the image mm -hmm. that, well, if they elected, you know, a woman who happens to have a decent CV and corporate experience, etc., etc., these guys are really willing to change, let's listen, um, you know, to what the mouthpiece in terms of the president um, would like to roll out. Right. Yeah. One of, uh, for, for stakeholder engagement, uh, yeah. how do you intend to, you know, merge this with the governance of the Football Association? It's, it's key at the moment. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the GFA has always been good at stakeholder engagement. It's just that did it was it working? You know what I mean? In terms okay. of, they're good at meeting with people, okay. they're good at um, talking with people, etc. Right. It's just that, did it translate to stakeholders being happy? Right. Not necessarily. Exactly. So there is a network, there's a fraternity there. Um, the stakeholders are very much aware of the Ghana Football Association. Right. It's just about going to that boardroom table yeah. uh, w with a different um, brand, a different image, and just walking away from that table with the person believe I don't know why, but I really believe that they're willing to change and I'm, w I'm willing to back this new image, which is what I think I could bring um, should I be elected. And, you know, people are sort of a bit fixa fixated that I'm female. Right. Um, I wouldn't want to, you know, take away from the fact that I'm female, but at the end of the day, women are more noted for actually doing the work <laughs> okay. and going out there and not wanting to be associated with something corrupt so they don't employ corrupt tactics, etc. Exactly. So in engaging with delegates, I really have been, in, you know, been trying to get across the point that I would be there to serve what is the fraternity of football yeah. as opposed to just be this symbolic head that yeah. just wants the position and not the function, basically. Well, now, um, let's... Um there are problems in, in, in Ghana football, I yeah. mean, beyond the, the building over there, the football association and its structures and everything, there are real problems. Now, you must have noted some of the problems that you would want to deal with when you become president. Can you take us through any of them, where the main focuses would be? Yeah, I mean, one of, um, one of the main things I would really like to roll out is the idea of within the first 100 days okay. to do impactful things that will just measure the pace for the next almost four years to come. Okay. Um, signature programs I would like to execute within the first 100 days um, would focus on making the fringe the main okay. in terms of women, juvenile, indoor football. Right. 
um, women, for instance, don't get as much um, of the money actually filtering down. So exactly. just ensuring that whatever bursary there is there, if it's meant for them, it goes to them. Okay. Um, we're getting a lot of recruitment in terms of women being recruited outward, but the clubs are suffering because they don't get a peswa from it. Okay. And um, female recruitment is almost treated as you know, um, education, certain like $2,000 per month um, when they go out, etc. But we need to so, sort of start adapting a, a model whereby club owners, female club owners know um, that they can negotiate better terms and they're, they're not getting contracts in foreign languages, which is what is happening. Right. Indoor sports, we don't have... Um, um, an indoor sports yeah, arena. Yeah, exactly. uh, juveniles is, you know, when we invest in our, in our juveniles, as FIFA says, anybody who wants to play should play. Okay. Um, and that's very much happening in Ghana. There's a huge interest. But it's only this year, for instance, that two delegates are going to be at Congress. Mm -hmm. um, there is no league. Um, so that would be quite easy to implement within 100 days. Right. I would also very much focus on a zero tolerance, you know, within the first 100 days, just highlighting to everybody there's a zero tolerance for corruption right. and there's going to be a lot of oversight if there's a bursary for anything, if there's money for anything, it will be published on the website and there will be updates as to how it was spent down to the PESWA. Um, so those are just a few things that I think would be the foundation of what my administration would be for four years should I be elected. Okay, now, now Amanda, I mean, um, looking at um, the 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 Football Association and, and those you're, you're contesting with? I mean, in the case that you win on the 25th, are you willing to work with the others to, to galvanize them, to become one unit, to make sure football thrives in the country? Yes, to a certain extent. I mean, through committees. To, to what extent? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, what, mo moving football forward is, is very important to also appreciate that it, it cannot be divorced from those who were part of it and those who know certain things. I, I think knowledge is power and there are quite a few uh, committees including the ethics committee you know there's quite a few committees for people to be on and to just um, engage with people who were there for a while uh, right. to a certain extent but that wouldn't be my main focus. My main focus would be moving football forward um, oversight, um, engaging corporate Ghana, right. and making sure there was a very diverse um, selection for the committees. Okay. And yeah. Okay. Now, now a very, a very final question. Now the FA looks really polarized with some really sharp divisions in there. The ideology of friends and cronies has has never gone away, and knowing that there are members of the previous administration who are contesting at the moment. The, when you sleep, don't, don't, you, don't you have like a, a sense of trepidation over your head that I might not win because you know these guys have the other guys behind them? Uh, not at all. I mean, I think uh, God will decide. Okay. And I think it's, I, I've always moved in terms of how I've always been selected. Even I was selected for the GFA as their ex external counsel for FIFA. Um, there's a lot of lawyers, male and female, but okay. you know, they saw something in me that right. I can fight. So, um, and cases have naturally come to me, opportunities, opportunities um, yeah. have come to me for me to work hard and establish myself. Right. So this is no different. Okay. Um, those I'm running against, half of them I know. Okay. Um, I'm not intimidated in the least. Right. <laughs> so um, <laughs> this morning I've been speaking to Amanda Clinton, who's one of the seven uh, who won the position of the Ghana Football Association president. Amanda, we are just about wrapping up uh, the interview this morning, but that's your camera. Say something to the delegates before we go. Yeah. Um, just to the delegates, there's 120 delegates who are going to be voting at the end of this month um, for the next GFA president. I just want you to know that if I haven't met you already, I will be meeting you within the next week or two personally um, and just be engaging with you. But Ultimately, um, the whole purpose of the meeting is to just find out what you would like in terms of a new um, revitalized GFA and assure you as to what I would promise you in rolling out a servant leadership model um, should I be elected the next president of the GFA. So I very much look forward to meeting you and just understanding your views. Well, uh, so that's Amanda Clinton there. Amanda, thanks very much for coming this morning. Thanks for having me on the show. And all the best, I mean, in, in the elections. 25th October should be a big day for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big day for Ghana football, actually.